Hey guys, this is John from US Dash Camera. Today I got a review on the Vantrue N2 Pro. Now this camera was on my top five dash cams of New Year's 2018. I've had it for a while, I just didn't have a chance to get my review up before I included it in my list. But what's special about this camera is it has a front and rear camera built into the main unit. So here you can see it's recording inside. And of course it can include audio. So it's an interesting camera that I think will appeal to a lot of rideshare drivers like Uber, Lyft, or taxi drivers. And of course there's a lot of reviews on this already, so I'm pretty late to the party, but I did purchase this myself. I got it on a lightning deal at, on Amazon for $150. It's typically $200, but I'll provide links down below to where you can purchase this if you are interested. Another thing I really think this camera would be good for is recording your encounters with police. The last few years I feel like all the stories with pr police brutality and a lot of other similar stories, people are sometimes on edge with police and this is something that can record inside your car and see what you're doing during something like being pulled over. This camera does have pretty good specs. The processor is a Novatech NT96660 and the front camera sensor is an OV4689 and that's the same image sensor that the A119 uses. This also has the rear camera which uses a Sony IMX323 which ideally or in theory should be better at low light situations like inside your car but it does also have infrared lights so we'll take a look at that later. But I want to point out this camera does have a 1440p mode, but if you're using the 1440p mode, that's only the one channel mode. If you want to use the rear camera, it's only 1080p front and rear. But even then, that is still pretty impressive that it has 1080p front and rear. So this is everything that's included in the box. It does include a pretty generic power cord, plugs into your cigarette port, and has a USB port to charge your phone. See there, it uses a mini USB port. Overall the quality and build of this does feel pretty nice. It does come with an extra USB cord for data transfer if you need it. Now the mount that comes with it is only a single suction cup mount and it does allow you to plug in the cord to the mount so there you can see some pins on the mount where it attaches and while I'm usually skeptical of mounts like this, this one does actually seem very well built it does latch on very strongly, the suction cup is very strong, and this allows you to remove the camera if you want without unplugging anything. So that's very convenient for people that want to just take the camera down from the window but they don't want to unplug it or take the suction cup mount down. Sometimes cameras like the A119 had issues with that extra connection between the mounting plate and the camera. But I haven't heard any stories like that with the N2 Pro, so hopefully we don't see any issues like that. There you can see there's actually an additional power port on the camera if you want to just plug it in there. Now to get to the memory card port, you can pull this back, and at first I was trying to pull it all the way back, and it's a lot easier if you actually just pull it a little bit than slide it. So here I'm putting the memory card in, and there you can see the back of the camera. We got couple buttons like an emergency lock button, we got a menu button, we got a power, and then some menu buttons like left and right, and there you can see the rear camera can swivel up and down. It feels very high quality too, the swiveling action of it feels very nice, it doesn't feel cheap at all. I was very impressed with this, I've never had a Van True camera before, so I was very satisfied with the quality of this. Now, the rear of the camera, as you have seen, has the small screen. It's only 1.5 inches, but it's big enough to where you can change the settings. Now, this camera doesn't have Wi-Fi, so when you want to change any settings, you do need to go to the menu, and there's, of course, a lot of different settings, pretty typical of most dash cameras. And like I mentioned before, one of the big things is if you want to use the rear camera, you get 1080p front and rear, but if you want 1440p, you're only going to get the front camera. So now this footage here is 1440p. Now this is going to be uploaded at only 1080p, so you're not going to really see the quality. 
but overall I was pretty impressed. It wasn't mind-blowing or anything in this 1440p mode. I did compare it to the A119 in 1440p, and I felt like the colors of the A119 were off, they were too yellowish, and the N2 Pro actually was more accurate with the color. But I did think the A119 did have a noticeable edge. Now I don't know if that's going to translate well over YouTube, but that's how what I felt. Now the night quality is also pretty good. It's very similar to the A119 again in the 1440p mode. I think this is an interesting camera since when you switch to the single channel mode you do get higher quality. So if you wanted to, you could only use the rear camera in situations where you'd want to. Like maybe you're an Uber driver and you only want it while you have passengers. Well, you can switch it pretty quickly. It only takes a few seconds to get to the menu and change it to 1440p and then you're only recording uh, in front of your car and then you get slightly better video quality so that's pretty interesting to me. Now I'm just flying through this menu because pretty much everything else is pretty standard. This camera does have a parking mode. You do need to buy a special hardwiring kit which I did not get unfortunately but basically it's a motion detection mode where once it detects motion it'll start recording but it isn't pre-buffered like the Blackview or Thinkware cameras so it's a little more simple but the options there if people are interested. So now I'm going to take a look at the 1080p footage with the rear camera also. The 1080p still looks pretty good. I believe this image sensor, the native resolution I believe is more close or is 1440p, something like that. So 1080p might not be the native resolution, but I thought it did still looked pretty good. I would have no issue using this as a main camera, especially if I was a Uber driver, or Lyft, or taxi driver. And of course, I'm going to say this several times over again, I'm sure, that is the, to me, one of the main target markets for this camera. I don't think most people want to be recording inside their car. It feels a little weird knowing you're being recorded. Some people even have issues recording just facing forward with dash cameras, so having a camera that's recording you in your car is definitely a little weird at first. Now I actually have a Street Guardian SGZZ12RC recording inside my truck at all times, but it doesn't have infrared. What I like about it is it does have a remote lens so the DVR is in a locked or secure location, but this is a much more simple solution and as you can see here with the infrared you, you can see people in the back seat if you really needed to. My back seat is pretty well lit up and I might have had a little too much reflection from my rear view mirror, but that is something to point out. Since you're going to be likely using that rear camera. You can't have it as high up as you normally would with some dash cameras. You have to have it somewhat hit or visible instead of hidden. So again, this is a very specific type of market I think where people are going to be using it because they want to record inside their car and potentially they might want passengers to see it and know they're being recorded. So it's very interesting to me. I did drive for Uber for a short while a few years ago and didn't really like it that much but what's nice is like here you can also record the audio so you can hear anything your passengers might say. So I think that's a very useful feature. So there's already tons of reviews on this. I considered whether or not I even wanted to put out a review but I did buy the camera. I really liked it and I know there's some people that do watch all my reviews and I figured I'd you know, put the effort out because I got it and used it for over a month. And I gotta say, I, r I really like this camera. It almost makes me want to start Ubering again just so I can use this camera. It's very high quality build. It feels really nice and sturdy. The video quality is great. Now, $200 I thought was pretty steep. It's actually very fair, I believe, compared to other two channel cameras with the, about the same video quality, but I, I look at cameras like the DR490 or 590 two-channel from Blackview, and while those don't have an IR feature, 
they do have a much more advanced parking mode. They do have a remote rear lens that you could hide. I think there's definitely some competition out there, but the fact that this has the IR that works very well is a huge plus, and it's going to be, as it already is, a huge success with rideshare drivers. So overall, like I said, I love this camera. I was trying to convince myself reasons as to why I, I need to keep it, like maybe use it as my camera in my work vehicle, but sometimes I'm with coworkers and I know they don't want to be recorded, so I am decided against that. But again, I, I really liked this camera. If you guys are interested in this camera, of course, check down in the description below. I do have Amazon affiliate links. I include those because they help support this channel to buy cameras like this for me to review and put out these videos. And of course, if you like this video or my other videos, I'd appreciate it if you hit like and subscribe. It really helps motivate me to keep making these videos. And as usual, drive safe. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.